Dear friends, hello and welcome. Today I am going to deliver a lecture on chromosomal mechanisms and environmental factors determining sex determination, bower bodies and dosage compensation. Now let us first have a look at the main objectives of today's lecture. The main objectives of the present module are outlined below. Number first, to give a general and thorough idea about the sex determination. Number second, explaining in detail the chromosomal mechanisms governing sex determination. Number third, giving a precise account of the environmental factors determining sex determination. Number four, to give a general and thorough idea about bar bodies. And finally, explaining in brief the concept of dosage compensation. Now, we will start with this sex determination. Within a population, sexual reproduction enhances genetic diversity because the genetic material of offspring comes from two sources. For most species of animals and some species of plants, sexual reproduction is carried out by individuals of the opposite sex, that is, females and males. The underlying mechanism by which an individual develops into a female or a male is called sex determination. A sex determination system is a biological system that determines the development of sexual characteristics in an organism. Most organisms that create their offspring using sexual reproduction have two sexes. Occasionally, there are hermaphrodites in place of one or both sexes. There are also some species that are only one sex due to parthenogenesis, the act of a female reproducing without fertilization. In many species, sex determination is genetic. That is, males and females have different alleles or even different genes that specify their sexual morphology. In animals, this is often accompanied by chromosomal differences, generally through combination of XY, ZW, X0, Z0 chromosomes or haplodiploidy. Because these chromosomes carry different genes, chromosomal differences between the sexes also result in unique phenotypes and inheritance patterns. The sexual differentiation is generally triggered by a main gene that is sex locus with a multitude of other genes following in a domino effect. In other cases, sex is determined by environmental variables such as temperature or social variables. In many organisms, the sex of an offspring will be irreversibly determined by its sex chromosomes or rather a set of genes on the chromosomes, regardless of any environmental variation. This condition is known as genotypic sex determination. However, in some organisms, the immediate environment determines whether the offspring will become a male or a female, a condition that is referred to as environmental sex determination. Ultimately, environmental sex determination is also controlled by genes. Many animals have a pair of sex chromosomes which determines whether their offspring will be male or female. In all mammals and most insects, the male gametes has either an X or a Y chromosome, half the sperm is carrying the X chromosome and half the Y chromosome. The male is thus heterogametic. The female gamete has only X chromosomes, the unfertilized X each carrying an X chromosome. The female is thus homogametic. A male offspring is produced when a Y sperm fertilizes an X egg and a female offspring is produced when an X sperm fertilizes an X egg. Hence, the male determines the sex of the offspring. Birds, some amphibia and a few insects also have XX and XY sex chromosomes, but here the sexes are reversed, the males being homogametic and the females heterogametic. Hence, the female gamete determines the offspring's sex in these examples. Primary sex determination is the determination of gonads. In most cases, the female is XX and the male is XY. Every individual must have at least one X chromosome. 
Since the female is XX, each of her eggs has a single X chromosome. The male, being XY, can generate two types of sperm, that is, half bear the X chromosome and half the Y. If the egg receives another X chromosome from the sperm, the resulting individual is XX, forms ovaries, and is female. And if the egg receives a Y chromosome from the sperm, the individual is XY, forms testes, and is male. The Y chromosome carries a gene that encodes a testes determining factor. This factor organizes the gonad into a testes rather than an ovary. Now, secondary sex determination affects the bodily phenotype outside the gonads. A male mammal has a penis, seminal vesicles, and prostate gland. A female mammal has a vagina, cervix, uterus, oviducts, and mammary glands. In many species, each sex has a sex-specific size, vocal cartilage, and musculature. These secondary sex characteristics are usually determined by hormones secreted from the gonads. However, in the absence of gonads, the female phenotype is generated. When Jost in 1953 removed fetal rabbit gonads before they had differentiated, the resulting rabbits had a female phenotype regardless of whether they were XX or XY. They each had oviducts, a uterus, and a vagina, and each lacked a penis and male accessory structures. If the Y chromosome is absent, the gonadal primordia develop into ovaries. The ovaries produce estrogen, a hormone that enables the development of malarian duct into uterus, oviducts, and upper end of the vagina. If the Y chromosome is present, testes form and secrete two major hormones. The first hormone, that is, anti-malarian duct hormone, destroys the malarian duct. The second hormone, that is testosterone, masculinizes the fetus, stimulating the formation of the penis, scrotum, and other portion of the male anatomy, as well as inhibiting the development of the breast primordia. Thus, the body has the female phenotype unless it is changed by the two hormones secreted by the fetal testes. Now, coming to the ZW sex determination system. The ZW sex determination system is found in birds, some reptiles, and some insects and other organisms. The ZW sex determination system is reversed compared to the XY system, that is, Females have two different kinds of chromosomes, that is ZW, and males have two of the same kind of chromosomes, that is ZZ. In birds, the genes FET1 and ASW are found on the Y chromosome for females, similar to how the Y chromosome contains SRY. However, not all species depend upon the W for their sex. For example, there are moths and butterflies that are ZW, but some have been found females with Z0 as well as females with ZZW. Because the use of ZW sex determination is varied, it is still unknown how exactly most species determine their sex. Another mechanism of sex determination that involves sex chromosomes is the X0 system that operates in many insects. In some insect species, the male has only one X chromosome, that is the X, and is designated X0, whereas the female has a pair, that is two Xs. In other insect species, such as Drosophila melanogaster, the male is XY. For both types of insect species, the ratio between X chromosomes and the number of autosomal sets determines sex. Now, let us briefly discuss what haplodiploidy is. Haplodiploidy is found in insects belonging to Hymenoptera, such as ants and bees. Unfertilized eggs develop into haploid individuals, which are the males. Diploid individuals are generally female, but may be sterile males. Males cannot have sons or fathers. If a queen bee mates with one drone, her daughters share 
3 by 4th of their genes with each other, not 1 by 2 as in the XY and ZW systems. This is believed to be significant for the development of eusociality as it increases the significance of kin selection, but it is debated. Now coming to the sexual dimorphism. Sexual dimorphism is a phenotypic differentiation between males and females of the same species. This differentiation happens in organisms who reproduce through sexual reproduction, with the prototypical example being for differences in characteristics of reproductive organs. Other possible examples are for secondary sex characteristics, body size, physical strength, morphology and ornamentation behavior and other bodily traits. Traits such as ornamentation and breeding behavior found in only one sex imply that sexual selection over an extended period of time leads to sexual dimorphism. Now let us try to learn about environmental factors determining sex determination. Environmental sex determination is any sex determination system in which sex is established by a non-genetic cue, for example, nutrient availability experienced within a discrete period after conception. In contrast, genotypic sex determination system occurs when sex is established by genetic factors, for example, sex chromosomes at conception. Environmental sex determination should also not be confused with some forms of hermaphroditism in which the sex is determined flexibly after birth, such as dichogamy. Among the main demonstrative studies, very few environmental factors have been analyzed and therefore it is probably premature to generalize. However, among the factors studied up till now, temperature appears to be the main environmental determinant of sex in most sensitive species. Interestingly, in these species, sensitive to temperature and pH, there appears to be no effect of other factors such as photoperiod, density or salinity and thus suggests a certain specificity for the type of sensitivity to external factors. Temperature dependent sex determination is a type of environmental sex determination in which the temperature experienced during embryonic development determines the sex of the offspring. It is most prevalent and common among amniote vertebrates that are classified under the reptile class. Temperature dependent sex determination was also thought to occur in some megapods. However, their offspring sex ratios appear to result from temperature dependent embryo mortality rather than from temperature dependent sex determination. That eggs are affected by the temperature at which they are incubated during the middle one third of embryonic development. This critical period of incubation is known as the thermosensitive period. Now let us discuss different patterns of environmental sex determination. Number first is the influence of temperature. Similarly to what has been encountered in reptiles and amphibians, three main types of responses to temperature have been reported in fish. In most of the thermosensitive species, the male to female ratio increases with temperature and ovarian differentiation is induced by low temperatures. Conversely, in some rare species, that is the channel cattle fish, Ectalarus punctatus, high temperatures may produce female biased sex ratios and low temperatures promote male biased sex ratios. Number second is influence of pH. In all the pH sensitive epistogramma species, the proportion of males is higher at an acid pH than at a more neutral value. Number third is the influence of density. In the paradise fish Macropodus opercularis, the proportion of females could be directly proportional to the density. Now let us discuss temperature dependent sex determination. While the sex of most snakes and most lizards is determined by sex chromosomes at the time of fertilization, the sex of most turtles and all of the species of crocodilians is determined by the environment after fertilization. In these reptiles, the temperature of the eggs 
during a certain period of development is the deciding factor in determining sex and small changes in the temperature can cause dramatic changes in the sex ratio. Often eggs incubated at lower temperature that is 22 to 27 degrees Celsius produce one sex whereas eggs incubated at high temperature that is 30 degrees Celsius and above produce the other. There is only a small range of temperatures that permits both males and females to hatch from the same brood of eggs. One of the best studied reptiles is the European pond turtle Imis obicularis. In laboratory studies, incubating Emmys eggs at temperatures above 30 degrees Celsius produces all females, while temperatures below 25 degrees Celsius produce all male broods. The threshold temperature at which the sex ratio is even is 28.5 degrees Celsius. The developmental period during which sex determination occurs can be discovered by incubating eggs at the male producing temperature for a certain amount of time and then shifting the eggs to an incubator at the female producing temperature and vice versa. In Emmys, the last third of development appears to be the most critical for sex determination. It is not though that turtles can reverse their sex after this period. It appears that the enzyme aromatase which can convert testosterone into estrogen is important in temperature dependent sex determination. The estrogen synthesis inhibitors work by blocking the aromatase enzyme showing that experimentally low aromatase conditions yield male offspring. This correlation is seen to hold under natural conditions as well. The aromatase activity of MEs is very low at the male promoting temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. At the female promoting temperature of 30 degrees Celsius, aromatase activity increases dramatically during the critical period of sex determination. One remarkable finding is that the injection of an aromatase inhibitor into the eggs of all female parthenogenetic species of lizards causes the formation of males. Recent studies have shown that polychlorinated biphenyl compounds, a class of wild spread pollutants that can act like estrogens, are able to reverse the sex of turtles raised at male temperature. This knowledge may have important consequences in environmental conservation efforts to protect endangered turtle species. Now coming to location dependent sex determination. The sex of the echoroid worm that is bonilia depends on where a larva settles. If a bonilia larva lands on the ocean floor, it develops into a 10 cm long female. However, if the larva is attracted to a female's proboscis, it travels along the tube until it enters the female's body. Therein, it differentiates into a minute 1 to 3 mm long male that is essentially a sperm producing symbiote of the female. Another example in which sex determination is affected by the location of the organism is the case of the slipper snail Crepidula fornicata. In this species, individuals pile up on top of one another to form a mound. Young individuals are always male. This phase is followed by the degeneration of the male reproductive system and a period of lability. The next phase can be either male or female depending on the animal's position in the mound. If the senile is attached to a female, it will become male. However, if such a snail is removed from its attachment, it will become female. Similarly, the presence of large numbers of males will cause some of the males to become females. However, once an individual becomes female, it will not revert to being male. Now coming to the next part of today's lecture that is bar bodies. A bar body named after the discoverer Murray Barr is the inactive X chromosome in a female somatic cell rendered inactive in a process called lionization. In those species in which sex is determined by the presence of the Y including humans or W chromosome rather than the diploidy of the X or Z. It is present in the nuclei of all cells except the germ cells. It is also called as sex chromatin as it indicates the presence of sex hormone. 
Mac Barr and Bertram were the two scientists to observe the deeply stained chromatin body in the nerve cell of female cat in the year 1943. Later, they came to know that the chromatin body was found absent in male cat. The bar bodies are present in other parts of body cells, for example, skin cells, epithelium cells, nerve cells, etc. In a normal female, the number of bar bodies present is comparatively less than the total number of X chromosomes. If the bar body are present in the nucleus of the cell, then it is referred to as positive and in case if they are present in other cells like skin cells, nerve cells, blood cells, then it is referred to as negative. Bar bodies are only present in female somatic cells and are absent in case of male somatic cells. The Leon hypothesis states that in cells with multiple X chromosomes, all but one are inactivated during mammalian embryogenesis. This happens early in embryonic development at random in mammals, except in marsupials and in some extra embryonic tissues of some placental mammals in which the father's X chromosome is always deactivated. In mammals, males are heterogametic and females homogametic. A typical human female has only one bar body per somatic cell, while a typical human male has none. Mammalian X chromosome inactivation is initiated from the X inactivation center or ZIC, usually found near the centromere. The center contains 12 genes, 7 of which code for proteins, 5 for untranslated RNAs of which only two are known to play an active role in the X inactivation process that is ZIST and T6. The center also appears to be important in chromosome counting, ensuring that random inactivation only takes place when two or more X chromosomes are present. In female cells, bar bodies or sex chromatin can be observed in four positions. Number first, Either they will be attached to the nucleus in the nerve cells or they will be attached to the nuclear membrane or they can be found freely in the nucleoplasm or they can also be found in nuclear expansions. A small biological test was performed previously to identify the sex determinants with the help of these bar bodies. In this test of buccal smear, bar bodies appear as a circular disc-shaped attached to their nuclear membrane. They play a vital role in representing the presence of inactive X chromosome which are present in the vegetative or the somatic cells. Bar body testing was introduced in the 1966 Olympic Games in an effort to detect the male athletes supposedly trying to pass as females to gain a competitive advantage. Teams from Eastern Europe were particularly suspect. Such allegations had been made for many years and a number of athletes were stripped of their medals as a result of ambiguous genital sex. Now, coming to the last part of our today's lecture, that is, the dosage compensation. Dosage compensation is the equalization of gene expression between the males and females of a species. Because sex chromosomes contain different number of genes, different species of organisms have developed different mechanisms to cope with this inequality. Replicating the actual gene is the impossible. Thus, organisms instead equalize the expression from each gene. In humans, the females, that is XX, silence the transcription of one X chromosome of each pair and transcribe all information from the other expressed X chromosome. Thus, human females have the same number of expressed X-linked genes as do human males, both genders having essentially one X chromosome per cell from which to transcribe and express genes. In other words, a mechanism by which species with sex chromosomes ensure that the homogametic sex does not have too much or the heterogametic sex too little activity of loci on the homogametic sex chromosome. In mammals, dosage compensation operates by maintaining only a single active X chromosome in each cell, while in Drosophila, it operates by hyperactivating the single male X chromosome. 
there is substantial evidence that the products of all of these genes function together in a complex termer decomposome to mediate dosage compensation by altering the chromatin structure of the X chromosomes in male. The products of these genes are all specifically associated with the same set of hundreds of sites along the male X chromosome and all of the multi-subunit histone acetyl transferase complex that is MSL proteins and at least one of the ROX RNAs must be present for the association of the compenosome with these sites. The requirement that all the MSL proteins be present for the compenosome to form allows dosage compensation to be made male specific by preventing the production of just one component in females. The likely mechanism by which the compenosome alters chromatin structure thereby leading to hypertranscription is via the modification of histones. Thus, Modifications of histones are a fundamental part of dosage compensation as they are of transcriptional regulation more generally. That is the end of today's lecture. Hope you have understood it well. Thank you.